Does this tell us a little bit about what you do? I know you've got a couple of companies that you essentially run, uh, but if you can maybe just give us a little bit of an overview on what those companies are and what they do. Uh, and maybe if you could just tell us about what is this journey that you're currently on or what is the goal that you're trying to achieve? Mm-hmm. Well, essentially, my, my name's Jake, so I'm, I'm a sort of Manchester-based entrepreneur. Um, I've, I've been sort of in business since, probably since I got kicked out of school when I was 16. Um, I've sort of been on the path of working full-time. Um, I originally left school and wanted to explore different options and understand what people were doing and understand. I mean, I was quite heavily into the gym, mm-hmm. so I used to be very sort of involved with the whole motivation going to the gym working out healthy diet and all that kind of stuff and that really got me onto the path of where i'm at today really um i essentially left school got a personal training apprenticeship which was great got me into routine because i had to be at the gym for sort of half past five so that sort of from early on i was in that routine of getting up early getting to the gym working doing a lot of things that because i was an apprentice at the time i didn't really want to do the things that I was told to do um, because I've always sort of been a man of do my own thing because mm-hmm. I thought that was the best way, uh, which is good and, and also quite bad in, in certain <laughs> situations. So that that's what I did. Um, I then left to, to go to a company um, working sort of on the phones and sales, which again, I mean, if I could give any advice to anyone looking to achieve something, it's, it's been able to master the skill of, of sales because whether you're selling something on the phones or whether you're selling something on the ground, it's, ultimately you're selling yourself and that's a big thing whatever you do in life so mm-hmm. I did that my original goal was to obviously work in the gym and all that kind of stuff and I wanted to work in sales build up some cash flow and build up some savings ultimately to pay for the, the higher courses so be a specialist in like diabetes or whatever it was but those courses were a couple of thousand and at the mm-hmm. time obviously I was an apprentice I was only earning probably four or five hundred pounds a month maximum um, and that's the goal was and then I joined the sales business. I was mentor guys who were still keeping in touch with, um, and they really sort of opened my eyes to the whole world of business. I mean, these two guys, they went to the, the same school as me, um, weren't the cleverest lads in school, quite a similar, similar situation to me, really. Bad, not bad lads, but, but good guys, had a good heart, mm-hmm. um, and they ultimately, they were making a large amount of money, had the Lamborghinis, had the the Maseratis, the Audi r the Range Rovers, mm-hmm. had the nice holidays and everything else. It's like, Hang on, there's people in the gym working all these hours. These guys aren't doing half the time. Not to say they weren't working hard or anything like that, but I knew that working in the gym wasn't going to buy me a Lamborghini, uh, early on anyway. I mean, obviously, yeah. if you have your MPT business and it grows into a successful business, then, yeah, great, it, it could do. But I wanted I wanted money. Um, I wanted that lifestyle. I wanted to be able to choose. Because I had, I was a man of wanting to do what I wanted all the time, it was... It suited that mindset and suited the uh, the goals and dreams that I, I had. And after that point, I, I went on to a sort of a, another sales role within property. And, and that's where the proper journey really started to happen. Mm-hmm. I, I worked in a fast sales sort of a, a state agency called Springbok Properties in Manchester, left there. And then I went to do my own business, the marketing business, working with investment agents, developers, property developers and all that kind of stuff. And, and that again has led me on to where the businesses that I own today. So we're, I own a development company with two partners and, a, and also a master agent business, which essentially looks after a number of across the UK, helping them work with international agents, people in Ch- China, Shanghai, Kuwait, Singapore, South Africa, Russia. And also what we do is we help people overseas and the partners invest in the right products in the UK. So obviously you probably see yeah. Liverpool, Birmingham, that there's so many towers going up. So essentially that's yeah. what we sell to the international markets and uh, that's where it's brought us up to, to today. Oh, wow. So that, that's, a, that's a really, really interesting journey, actually, you've taken us through there. Um, what would you say is your actual goal that you're trying to get to? Because I know you mentioned earlier, you know, you saw other people earning a lot more doing uh, the type of businesses that they were and that was part of the motivation why you went into something different away from the gym. But what would you say is the goal that you're trying to achieve now? Well, I mean, from an early age, I, I, I want to have freedom, to, to put it bluntly, mm-hmm. um, to cut a long story short. That is the goal, to have freedom to be able to do what, what I want. And, I mean, the way I see it, it's not everyone's an entrepreneur. But I was even going to be an entrepreneur or work for an entrepreneur. And I, I didn't want to build someone else's dream. I wanted to build my own. So I want to be able to travel around the world. I want to be able to go to restaurants. I want to go to this. I want to go to, to whatever. And ultimately not have to worry about looking at my bank account and that was a goal and it still sticks with me now um mm-hmm. family is a big reason why as well but the goal is 
to, to be able to give family and friends the opportunity to, to maybe live a life that they wouldn't have had if I wouldn't have been able to do the things that I'm, I'm doing right now. Sure, sure. And then you've so this is a uh, one invest that you've got at the moment, and then I think you've also got a social media agency. Is that correct? Yeah, so I've still got the social media agency. I mean, that's great, and that that I've learned a lot from doing that. I've still got a, a number of clients on that on retainers, but social media is great, but it's not going to make you the, the big money, which sort of the millions of what I was looking for. But mm-hmm. again, it's a skill that's allowed me to grow the business, the grow the businesses that I currently have. Sure. Um, and I think a lot of people, I mean, like with businesses, I think you got self awareness and playing off each of the strengths. At the moment, we've got the development business, which we're securing sites in Manchester, which we're building. Then we've also got, like I said, the master agent business. And the partners that I've got, partner Charles, he's the sales director, I'm the partnership director. And we've got Alex, who's the operation director. And I think that's the big thing in business or whatever you do. I think it's playing off each of the strengths um, mm-hmm. and making sure you've got the right team behind you. It's like having a, a strong, solid football team. Everyone plays their part. Um, I don't think any anyone can achieve things on their own at all. Um, mm-hmm. it's, if so, it's, it's quite lucky. But I think in terms of where I wanted to go, going from a, do you mean a six-figure business to a seven-figure to an eight-figure business, yeah. you need those right partners involved. You need the right people behind you. You need that team because without that, you're not going to be able to grow as quickly as you want to. Yeah, absolutely. How do you actually manage your time between those things? Because it sounds like you've still got a bit of stuff going on on the social media agency side. You've obviously got a tremendous amount of stuff going on with international clients as well with One Invest. How do you actually manage your time? Well, for the last, I mean, what are we on now? It's June now. Since 2017, um, January, I've been working seven days a week, um, which is, I mean, obviously I've been on a, on a few holidays here and there, um, but I've had the odd day off. But yeah, it's, it's seven mm-hmm. days a week every week, which I, I quite frankly enjoy. I mean, I'm at, I'm at the age, I'm only 21. Um, and a lot of people, obviously my age, they, they do like to go out, which don't get me wrong, I do love a great party and all that uh-huh. kind of stuff. But I knew I had a bigger vision and I knew that in four or five years time, if I did stick to what I'm doing now, I could get there. Even if it, I mean, if it took longer, I knew that the steps that I'm putting in place now is what I needed to do to achieve the goals that I did. So, I mean, I'm in the office from 5 a.m. in the morning because I speak to agents over in, in Hong Kong, Singapore, and obviously the time difference. And a bit, I'm a big believer in just pretty much outworking people. Uh, I mean, if you're in an industry, whatever it is, and because the way you got to see it, business is a sport. You mean, if, for example, if you're a football team, you go in the Premier League, you're against however many teams it is. In, in business, you're against people across the world. It's not just the people in the UK. So I think if you're in an industry where you've got 10 people giving 100% and you're only giving 70%, then those 10 people are going to ruin your business and, yeah. and you're going to be, I mean, dissolving very, very quickly. So that that's what I'm a big believer in, managing time. Yeah, it's, it's long hours and it's seven days a week, but you got to do what you got to do. I mean, we're here to take over, not take part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned you're 21 years old there. What's the perception or the reception from your friends been like around that? Because obviously I'm imagining a lot of your friends are probably, what, finishing university or just around near the end of university if they've gone through the more traditional path. And, you know, they might be looking at yourself and thinking, oh, that's quite a different thing. So what's the perception from mm-hmm. your friends and people around you been like? Well, I mean, I, I'm, quite, I'm quite lucky, actually, because Charles, he, he's my business partner. He's a very, very close friend of mine. I've also got a group, a close group of friends um, who I've sort of grown up with, and, they, and they've almost gone on similar paths to me. I mean, I, I've grown up with a lot of people who went to, say, that, for example, the grammar schools. And t- we almost, as, as, a, as a small little team, um, we sort of did our own paths and didn't go to university, which a lot of people do, and there's nothing to say bad about university. I think a lot of some people, it's maybe not the best route for them, but... Yeah, I mean, my friends, I mean, at the moment, I try and keep my, my cards close to my chest. I, I'm not the kind of guy to be, to be boasted about the money and all that kind of stuff, because until I've got that Lamborghini, until I've got that luxury penthouse in Miami, I'll let the, the work do the talking. Mm-hmm. So they're, my friends are very supportive, and I've got a great group of friends, and I've got quite a, a large group of friends as well around the world, and it's, it's great, and whatever it is. And I think, like Ty Lopez says, I think you need to have a 33% rule. You need to spend 33% of your time with people above you. And that's why I heavily believe in conferences and learning from other people. You've got a 33% of your time you've got people on your level, which again is a lot of my friends. A lot of my friends are all doing their own thing. The people blow you to, to play off your ego. So I try and find that balance. But yeah, I can't say nothing bad about my friends. They're all great guys and great girls. So uh, yeah, I have to say bad about them. Now, that's the thing that's super important to have a strong group of friends around you who help motivate you and inspire you as well to achieve your own goals. That's always been a recurring Mm -hmm. theme when I've spoken to previous people as well, that 
is something that always pops up that they've always had this group of people around them that's really helped inspire and motivate them and crack on as well because i think if you've got positive people around you it just only helps amplify your own strong abilities and then give you that confidence that you yeah. need to go out and do stuff of course well i mean i got kicked out of school the friends that the people that i was chilling with at that point weren't the people that i was close to as as now mm. and it, i mean it's it just goes to show that the people that you start to become so networking events all the time even if to me a lot of people don't see it as they, they shy away from it in a way it's, it's all about confidence i mean i remember 17 18 going to networking events not really having a clue what i was doing but i had to stand up i had to present myself in front of 30 40 business owners and i think that the way you got to see it is you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable and once you can do that and you can strive for that then things will come to you and and you don't really realize at the time but now things like i said things are starting to pick up and it just goes to show that the years, even though I'm only 21, the three, four years I have been putting over the last couple of years, it's, it's starting to pay off, which is great. And uh, I'm mm. sure a lot of people will benefit from that. You mentioned that you were really into the gym and you were part of the, you know, really into the fitness routine as well. And I'm sure you, I think you somewhat alluded, alluded to it as well when you mentioned that you work seven days a week. But could you give us an insight into your daily routine? I'm guessing, you know, you probably wake up quite early. You probably have a, a bit of a set routine that you do on a daily basis to help you get to where you want to get to. Mm -hmm. Of course. Well, the good thing about the gym is, I mean, why my mindset is where it is today is because of the gym. It's the easiest way to get into the routine. I mean, story over that is just the, is the greatest way to, to get into routine and get your mindset and you get your body going. But in terms of a day to day, it's, essentially getting up early between half four and half five depending on what time i went to bed that night mm -hmm. before um i get to the gym whether it's doing a run in the morning or do, do something whether it's a, a walk with a podcast just get out and about walking um or go to the gym and then i get into the office relatively early as stated before and then it's just working till whatever i need to get done between six and seven eight o'clock sometimes but my big focus because i do work seven days a week I want to try and make sure that, like I said, it's all about the work-life balance because the last thing I want to do is get burnt out, which a lot of people can do. And I've been at points where I do feel burnt out. So what I try and do now is I get into the office for like half six, seven o'clock in the morning, and then I'd finish between five and six o'clock. Once I've done that, I've been in the office nearly, I mean, 10, 11 hours. And if you work out over the week, it's, it's close to 80, 90 hours a week. But mm -hmm. then when I get home at six o'clock, I've got the whole evening to spend. I spend time with girlfriend, spend time with the family again see friends and when i'm like seeing friends at night you think i should I, I, sometimes in the back of my mind i'm like should i be doing this i should be working but then you realize that you've been on the graphs you've been in the office since 7 a.m yeah, speaking yeah. to people all day all day so i think sometimes i'm quite hard on myself um but yeah daily daily podcast again in the morning on the way to work i'm a big believer in personal development as well and yeah, I think me, me, I'm a big believer in meetings as well. I think if uh, that's what I try and push on a day-to-day -day basis, because meeting people is the key, especially in the industry that I'm in at the moment. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you can't get a lot of business done if you don't really know them on a, on a serious level. That's why I try and push for the international partners to come over to the UK and meet up. And once you've met them, you sell yourself, like I was say, saying before, the job's done and you'll build trust with people and you can get business out of them for, for however many years you want to do business with them. Something I think that a lot of people probably actually struggle with at the beginning, and I think you mentioned earlier that you struggled with actually meeting and networking people as well. Mm -hmm. How, what sort of tips or advice would you give to people who are quite new to it? And, you know, they've maybe they've never even been to a networking event before, or maybe they've only been to a couple, but they're still not quite sure how to navigate their way around. Are there any tips and tricks that you would give people? Well, the, the biggest hurdle in networking and being becoming a, a good communicator is is essentially just getting there. I mean, the biggest hurdle that people have is, is not actually being in a networking event. So like I was saying before about being, I mean, being comfortable in uncomfortable situations, tip is just getting yourself there, having a story. It doesn't, you don't have to go to a networking event with some amazing business and all this kind of stuff. I was going there saying, look, this is what I want to achieve. And because you're young and, and hungry, people like that. I mean, you're speaking to a 35, 40, 50 old business person, whatever it is. They know that you're the next generation of entrepreneurs or whatever it is. And you have, you have to have a good story. Uh, and, a, and a good reason why if you can share that message with the, the people there but i think also networking as well where I, what i found was a good tip was make it i mean asking as many questions about them people if you're trying to talk to people i mean especially if you're young and all kind of stuff and you're trying to tell people about you pe people really don't care um mm -hmm. that's what i found people don't really people aren't interested if you're if they have a business owner and they're doing 
they've got an eight figure business and you're trying to say, you're, this is who I am, I'm hungry. That Yeah, it's great, but they don't really they actually care. You've got to ask questions about them. And once you can start asking questions about them and playing off their ego, they get them talking. It shows that you're interested in them. And that's how, pe- that's how you st- start conversations. And people remember that. People don't remember the people that are, don't show interest. They just mm-hmm. remember what, how, they don't remember what you say, so they remember what, how you feel. And I think that's a big thing for me. And I think if you can leave that room knowing that you've done everything you can to make sure that person knows who you are in the, in the correct way, then that's the key for me. I think that's a great, great piece of advice there around getting people to remember how they felt, not about necessarily what they spoke about. That's a, that's a great piece of advice that I don't really hear a lot of people talk about, or not, not enough anyway. So yeah, I think that's something for people to take away from this is uh, if they're struggling with networking events, just think about how people feel from that conversation that you've had with them. Is that something that they're going to remember through the feeling just by itself? I think that's a mm-hmm. very, very strong piece of advice that not enough people talk about there. So I wanted to just touch on a little bit around the self-development stuff that you mentioned earlier. You said that you tried to keep yourself updated and obviously continuously self-develop yourself by going to different events. As an entrepreneur, sometimes it might be quite difficult to fully understand or fully know what it is that you need to know, um, because quite often it Mm -hmm. is all around those unknown unknowns. Uh, You don't know what you don't know. How do you actually go about trying to train yourself or trying to learn the necessary skills and pieces of knowledge i guess in order to find out what those unknowns actually are well the, the way you got to see it is i mean uh, i'm a big i'm a big follower of gary v i don't know if you know, know yeah yourself, absolutely but he, he what he what he talks about is reverse engineering you've got to have a have a goal so whatever it is whatever goal it is and you've got to reverse engineer and um, move backwards and i think those steps are going to be so many different avenues that those steps entail I think it's, again, going back to networking, I think it's, first of all, getting over that first hurdle of doing it. And then you can start to understand and fill in the gaps of where you need to improve and also what you're good at. And like Gary Vee says, I mean, build on your strengths, maybe not so your weaknesses. I slightly disagree with him in that aspect. I think everyone, especially if you're young and hungry, I think you can work on a lot of things. But again, I think it's having reverse engineering, writing out lists of what you need to achieve and what you need to learn. I think a lot of people go into personal development of just picking up a book for whatever reason um, and not actually understanding why they're learning what they're through it because when I first started development and, and business and all that kind of stuff I, I, I remember on one of my birth I think it was my 19th birthday I probably spent like 200 pounds on books um, mm-hmm. I never actually read any of the books I just thought it was quite a cool idea to have all these books and look cool and say yeah I'm doing this and doing that I never actually read them I never actually applied any of this stuff and then I mean a guy that I met at a network event he suggested podcasts and audio books and that kind of stuff and I think it's understanding of what learning strategy works for you as well. Mm-hmm. So I, I listen to them on the way to work and you, you have goals that you need to, uh, in terms of learning. It's like being at school, but because you, you've got a, an end goal and return of it, you can start to see the benefits of it. But I think it's just understanding what you need to learn and why you need to learn. I think once you've got the why in there, then you're good to go. Absolutely, yeah. I think I see, um, just the, touching on uh, the learning uh, materials I've seen a lot of people go and you know like you said you purchase a whole bunch of books and then they're just sitting on the bookshelf and I've, I've probably been slightly guilty of that as well I've got a few <laughs> books sitting on my shelf that I haven't got around to reading I think the first step there is it's probably finding out what works for you what's the best learning format for yourself and then trying to cater to that I'm also someone who listens mm-hmm. to a lot of podcasts as well and I've realized that actually I'm someone who uh, ebooks probably work better for me than physical books because I'm out and about so much and I don't like to carry too much stuff with me so if I've got a book on my phone uh, via the Kindle app or via PDF then I'm more likely to read that than having a physical book sitting on my shelf that's just yeah, life. It's a lot of, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a lot easier. I mean, if I could give any advice on, on personal development right now, there's an app. I don't know. I, I always say it wrong. It's, I think it's called Blinkist or Blinklist. Um, I can't remember what, it, what it's called. It's, I think I, I, think I know about this. It's the one that gives you the summaries of... Um, yeah, 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 exactly. Because the reason why I got, I got this, I mean, I, I found it amazing. It's so pretty much to outline it for people, it, it gives you two options. You can either summarise this book into seven to eight pages or seven to eight points, and it outlines the like Tyler Lopez says, the golden nuggets of that book. Because when you do start to get into the personal development world, you, you start to understand that actually quite a lot of the books and quite a lot of the authors are saying the same thing, but slightly different. And which is good sometimes because you get it to see it from a different angle, but most of the stuff is just the same. So what this do, what this book does is it cuts out all the crap pretty much. And it, you get straight to the point on the, on the points that you need. And that's why Ty Lopez can read, it, read a book a day because he doesn't read all the book. 
he, he physically couldn't. Um, mm-hmm. Is he picks out the golden nugget he's looking for, and again he's having that strategy. When he opens that book, he knows right. I want to achieve it. I want to learn this from it, and that's how you do it. Cause the last thing you want to do is waste. Yeah, absolutely. I've just had a quick check. It's actually called Blinkist, um, and it's only for non-fiction books as well. So it's catered for you know self-learning sort of uh, material. So that's exactly what it's actually meant for. Mm-hmm. It actually just says you can listen or read to in in a whole book in about fifteen minutes if you want. Uh, that's probably the well, exactly. super high level summary, I guess. But obviously, you can probably get a bit more details from there as well. Well, exactly. And I think if you if you for example travel forty five minutes an hour to work every day. I mean, I'm guilty of it. I should I should use the app a lot more. I do. I use it once a day. Just read one book or read over, listen to one book. But if, if you're if you if it takes you 45 minutes, one hour to get to work every day, you can listen to three, four books on the way to work. It's crazy. And what you're doing is because they're the key points and the points that you can learn. It's it's amazing. Um, and I, I can't remember where I got it recommended from. I think it's saw it on Facebook actually. Um, and then Nima Part yeah. Chart, the business partner. Yeah, just for anyone who's interested, it it's uh, it does have a, a subscription, so it's twelve ninety nine or seventy nine ninety nine uh, monthly or annual. Um, that's in dollars, and then I think you can you, it has a whole bunch of perks after that as well. So depending on which one you get, you get a whole bunch of perks. But I think that's where you can start off with. But yeah, definitely great great resource to to use, especially if you're quite often short on time and you don't have a lot of time to read the whole book, um, and you just want to get the the main points and the main summary from some of these key books that are well worth reading so yeah that's a great resource to have a look at i wanted to just touch a little bit more on the motivation aspect you've obviously got your company it's running well it's um you know i guess at a point where probably is sustainable as well what motivates you to keep growing and you know keep it progressing into a, a new direction I, i'm a big believer i always say the, the words big believer i mean I, I try and never i mean at the age i'm at now i, I don't want to get comfortable Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't want to be satisfied with the work. I mean, even though it's on paper, I mean, people tell me, yeah, you're doing well, Jake, you're doing this, you're doing that. You're doing a lot of things that a lot, a lot of people aren't even doing when they're 35. But I think just being not, not satisfied with where you're at. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, I mean, when you're in your 20s, I, I think you can't be. If you've got a, a big goal of whatever you want to do, then I think getting comfortable and being truly satisfied i think that's a big mistake uh, i think mm-hmm. you lose now a lot of potential business because ultimately if you're going to be complacent like you said or starting to get comfortable then going back to my point about being in business against the whole world you, you've got people who are in a similar position to yourself that aren't satisfied we aren't satisfied and aren't comfortable and i'm outworking you all the time and i think that's that's what i try and stick to all the time that's why i do work seven days a week because mm-hmm. We, you've got to just keep working as soon as you start to get complacent then that's where businesses start to crumble mm-hmm, mm-hmm. absolutely yeah 100 percent agree with that i think um you probably can see that from some of the larger companies who have clearly got complacent and then they started losing um i guess market shares as well i think uh, one example <laughs> that always sticks to my mind is the the microsoft of old where they were great at turning revenue for the longest period of time, but then they got so behind with innovation that, that Apple just came in and completely overtook them in terms of some of the newer technologies that they were bringing out. And Microsoft tried mm-hmm. desperately with some different things, like uh, when it came to the MP3 player market, they tried with the Zoom. I don't know if you remember that when Apple were uh, uh, bringing yeah, out yeah. all of the iPods. But yeah, you know, Microsoft really suffered as a result of that. And even with mobile phones, even till today, I think because Microsoft was so late in the game, you know, they've pretty much got zero mobile presence, even though I think they still try to operate with some Windows mobile devices here and there. But, yeah, that's what happens. Yeah, I think crazy. When companies get complacent. So if, mm-hmm. if companies are large companies can experience that, then absolutely individuals can experience that even more. Exactly. I mean, look at Toys R Us. Yeah, yeah. If you look at Germany, you know I mean? they've like shut all the stores down in the US and shows are sort of shutting down in the UK every week. Um, and that's simply because they didn't adapt. And obviously the big players like Amazon, uh, a big follower of, of, of Jeff Bezos. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just proofs in the pudding. You've got to innovate. And I think I, I read a book, I think it's called Who Moved My Cheese or whatever it was called. And that's that's the book outlining the people who can adapt to the market and adapt to what the consumer wants. Those are the people that win. It's not the people with the facts. It's not the people with this and this and that. It's what the market tells you is going on. And I think if mm-hmm. you can adapt to what's going on in the market, then that's what you're doing. Because ultimately, if you don't adapt, your customers are going to go elsewhere. I mean, if you look at Toys R Us, and I think it's all about solving problems for people. And the internet, and obviously how Amazon have, have 
almost got quite lucky with the, obviously the internet boom, but also to, to get to where Jeff Bezos is, is the richest man in the world, over 100 billion in net worth. It is, it's, it's amazing. So I think that he, what he's done is innovated and made sure he stayed on track with what the consumer wants and how the world's operating. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, really sad about Toys R Us personally because I've got a lot of childhood memories um, from Toys R Us. I know. Tell me about it. Oh I remember gosh. going on the bikes, riding around. <laughs> Mum tell me to get off, but... I, I think, mean, I think my, my first video game console was probably from Toys R Us as well, I think. Um, so, yeah, very yeah, sad. It's, it's, very sad. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so just about um, your learnings along the way then. So, you you know, you've you've got to a certain point now and hopefully you've got a whole bunch of stuff ahead of you as well. But from the journey that you've been on so far, is there any particular advice that you might give people who might be trying to start their own company or do something similar to yourself? I, when I was first got started to get into business, I, I always thought, I mean, I saw the people on Instagram, the laptop lifestyle, where you don't have to work <laughs> or anything like that and all that kind of stuff. And I got sold on the dream. Uh, I think a lot of people do get sold on it and then they don't get the results they want and then they give up and they go back to work and whatever they need to do, they, they do what they, they return back to the previous job. And I, I, I always thought that if you want to achieve something great in life, you, you've got to make sure that you've got to have a full-time work ethic. You can't have a part-time work ethic and expect full-time results. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, that's a big thing for me. And success is never an accident. It's, it's done on hard work, I mean, to, to, determination, um, and being realistic as well. And I think, again, timing as well. If you're going to the industry just because you're emotionally attached to it as, a, as an individual, yeah, and, you, but, and the, the, the consumer doesn't want it, then the consumer doesn't want it and you're not going to make any money um, mm -hmm. and I think that again time I think once you can understand why people buy things or why people do certain things then you've cracked the code and that's why when you see these like Amazon like these big plays in the market because obviously they've got obviously a lot of financial backing all that kind of stuff but they can go these big leaders can go into any industry now and, and almost dominate in a way um, mm -hmm. providing they've got the right skills behind the right team behind them and that's because they understand what the consumer wants um, yeah. and I think because they've, they've dominated and they've built the connections again going back to the networking and the, the good communicators and people want to hear a story and people I mean they like following journeys and that's why I mean when we people I mean as humans we love watching documentaries and we love watching films because there's always a story and I think if you compel that story in, in the right way then, then you can do what you want you can have the freedom that everyone I guess is chasing for mm -hmm. if you could actually go back a few years is there anything that you would do differently <laughs> what I do well there's a, there's a lot of things um, <laughs> work harder is something that I would do again because going back to my point before about I thought I could do it on a part-time work ethic and expect the full-time results mm -hmm. that it's just work it's simply working harder I mean I, I've got the results that I have now is by literally outworking every single person that I know um, mm -hmm. obviously I'm a business partner they work as, as hard as I do but yeah, simply just working hard. If you think you're working hard, then there's there's always 110% of someone working harder than you. And that to me was a, a big motivation to say, hang on, if, if these people here or there's 19 year olds here making millions a month or whatever it is, I, I need to be that. I mean, the world we live in today is full of opportunities. I mean, we've got the internet, do you mean? And 50 mm -hmm, years yeah, ago, we yeah. didn't. Do you mean, people didn't have the option. Now you can work full time and you can do work from 7 till 11 at night, 7 till 12 and grow a business and then you can grow that as a part-time into a full-time business. And I think that's, if you if people don't realise the opportunity in the world that we're living in today is, is so amazing and full of opportunities and that's, people need to really realise what's going on and I think once you do that, you, you can do it, achieve whatever you want to achieve. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely agree with you. I think if you look around as well, there's been so many success stories of people who've started something on the side and then it's just grown exponentially. But it comes back to your point around working really, really hard at that. So even though that they are working on something on the side, they've taken it 110 percent and they put so much time and effort in and they've sacrificed so many other things in order to get that off the ground and get it to a successful point. So I, th I think your comment around don't work part-time and expect full-time results is very very valid for whether you're trying to do it on the side or whether you're trying to do it full-time straight off the bat you have to basically mm -hmm. give it 110 percent the whole way no matter how you're trying to do it i think mm -hmm. of course well the way you got to see it as well is everyone it'd be as simple as it sounds and you probably will hear a lot of people saying is everyone does have 24 hours in a, in a day that is a thing yeah. that everyone has do you mean it Yes, obviously, everyone's got to have the right amount of sleep. I mean, I get between six, seven hours, sometimes longer, depending on what how what I do that evening. But 
that seems to work for me. And if a lot of people like they say to me, oh, no, I need to get this amount of sleep and all that kind of stuff. But then they're not getting the results that they want. It's just like, well, you've got to sacrifice something. You, mean? Mm-hmm. you can't expect yeah. all these results to come to you if you're just still taking the actions that you're currently taking. I mean, the way I see it is that your life is a, re- a true reflection of your current actions. And once you can I mean, see that, then obviously uh, when you first start now, it's, it's quite difficult to see that. But yeah, I think I think the actions that you're putting in place on a on a daily basis is uh, a re- reflection of what your what your life is presenting at the moment. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. What are some of the main challenges that you've actually faced along the way that have maybe made you question what you're doing? Well, in, in my particular industry, I mean, I, things with me, I mean, I because I've I'm a, I've always followed American people, and I've always mm. been the, the, as you know, Americans. They love motivation more than the British. It's just simple mm-hmm. as they're, they're, they're slightly ahead of the curve of that. And I always follow the stories of people that I mean, didn't get, did, did the business and didn't get paid for five, ten years, but then obviously went on to become multimillionaires, multi-billionaires, whatever it is. And I think with me, it's I think keeping that consistency and work ethic. Um, there's obviously I mean, business is difficult. I mean, it's it's it's, uh, it's probably sometimes one of the most the, the worst things I've ever done, but ultimately it's also the best thing because I can um, I'm in a position where I can do what I want but yeah I think on a day-to-day basis I, I always thought in business that everyone has good days every single day and most of the time it's not probably 75% of it's bad days but you've just got to see those bad days as opportunities to grow and opportunities to learn more and that's how it like mm-hmm. go back to my point about getting comfortable or being uncomfortable once you have those bad then over time that number's going to reduce and th- I mean the stuff that you saw as bad or negative will become good because you see that as a learning opportunity not a negative opportunity. Mm-hmm. And then just on that as well, how do you actually keep a positive mindset to help achieve your goals? I know you mentioned a couple of things around your routine, but is there anything else that you do in order to maintain a positive mindset? So first one, self-development, personal development, read the book, listen to a lot of motivational videos. Um, there's mm-hmm. a guy called Tom Bell, Tom Bell, I think it's Tom Bell, who does Impact Theory. Um, he has, I mean, give any advice, look him out, Impact Theory, he does 20 to 30 minute videos and it's just simple like motivation talks about quotes he'll outline four or five quotes and then go into detail about it's quite cool good music in the background you're not me when you listen to them um (laughs) and yeah i think just again listen doing that on a day-to-day basis has been able to keep me in that routine mentally um visualization is a big thing when i go to the gym i I try and have some sort of almost alone time because i'm I'm quite addicted to my phone i must admit (laughs) um so doing a quite a lot of visualization affirmations in the morning um, is a great way to, to get your mindset in that good frame of mind because I think I think it's like 75% of our thoughts are negative. So I think you can just start to replace them over time with more positive thoughts, doing the visualization, and, and things will come to you. And I mean, now I've got my mind is constantly thinking of the bigger picture, things are starting to me. Um, and I think once you can adopt mm-hmm. that mindset, then progress will start to happen. Just on that, how do you actually deal with negativity? I'm sure you've come across moments in in your career where you've just thought, oh, actually, this is, you know, getting a bit too much, or you've got some sort of negativity around you. How do you actually deal with those sorts of situations? Well, when I when I first started in business, I I, I took everything personally, like a lot of things people do. Um, and when you're a young, hungry entrepreneur, you, you do you just want to get everything done. And sometimes I, I used to react because I'm quite uh, hot headed in certain situations. Um, you t- to tend to act unprofessionally. Once you do that, you burn a relationship with someone in business because people mm-hmm. don't want to work with someone who's spitting the dummy out, as we say. So I just see it as, first of all, not taking it personally, business to business, the way you see, you're there to make money, not friends. Obviously, friends come into it with business and relationships that you build over time. Um, but I just see now negative stuff because, again, the mindset is a lot more calm. It's a lot more experienced. I see situations as, as stress as as a positive. I mean, the level of problems that you have are your level of success. I mean, I'd rather have big problems of doing, I mean, million pound deals than having little problems of doing a hundred pound deals. Do you know what I mean? And that's the way you got to see, even though it's obviously there's a lot more stress to it, the return and, I mean, the ROI of of that task or thing ahead is, is a lot more profitable and better for you. So do you do anything else in particular apart from the gym? So I'm I'm mainly thinking around, do you have any sort of meditation routine or anything like that? Or is it all around uh, a bit of the workout, a bit of the podcast and a bit of the reading? Well, 
I do try and go to this thing called floating. Um, I don't know if you you know about it. It's flotation tanks. Uh, a lot of the sort of the American people are following Rose. He talks a lot about it. It's pretty much a, there's a place in Manchester called Float Level, um, and that's essentially where you line a salt tank. Um, you're pretty much coming out feeling like a, a, a transformer. You feel like amazing. That's again something that's almost like meditation. I've tried meditation with the head the Headspace app, um, but I've re- I'll be honest, I've not really got into the true routine of doing it. I try and do massages now and again, just because, again, I get, because I do stress sometimes quite within myself. I, I try and go to the massage. It's, it's a good way to relax, release those knots in the mm-hmm. muscles. Um, I, I, do yeah. quite, I, go to quite, I do quite a lot of walking as well. There's some beautiful areas from there. I live in, in Cheshire. Macclesfield Forest is one of them. And, yeah, there's some, some great places. It's a good way to, to get out and about because the way, because how humans have evolved over, over the years is, We've come from living in the woods. We've come from all this greenery, and now we're put. I mean, we're in a society where everything's so fast-paced, so much artificial mm-hmm. light, and all that kind of stuff. And I think if I mean the way we got to see it, we've come from thousands of years ago, obviously living in the in the woods, hunting all that kind of stuff. And there's there's a great achievement of going on a nice walk, seeing beautiful views, as, as you know. And I think some I travel quite mm-hmm. quite a lot down to London, and you don't really see that side of life sometimes. Um, and I, yeah. I've got friends that live there in Canary Wharf, and they come down and they're like, they love the walks. And it's just like, sometimes you take it for granted. But yeah, that, that's some of the things that I try and do in my spare time. Yeah, I have to agree with you. Unfortunately, London isn't exactly the best place to get a bit of natural scenery. Um, I've lived in London my whole life and it's essentially, um, you know, it's, I'm, I'm very used to the city lifestyle and don't get me wrong, I do really like it. But you definitely miss out on a lot of that natural scenery and trying to and, and being able to go out for a walk in order to completely refresh your head whereas when you go out for a walk over here you're probably walking on a side road with a whole bunch of traffic on the main road or something <laughs> like that so it's, it's not exactly the most uh, refreshing let's say experience that you can have <laughs> so that's that's not great but absolutely agree with you I think um something that I started doing probably around two years back now or something like that uh, I, I started changing my workout so I work out in the morning and since I did that for the first few days, yeah, it was tiring. I had to wake up a bit earlier. I think I was waking up at about five o'clock at that time and then essentially getting a workout in straight away. But I found that it completely changed how I felt for the entire day after I got used to it. I, I just felt so much more energized and so much more fresh and able to do stuff. And I just found my days just ended up being so much more productive as a result as well, because I was mm-hmm. just straight away in the right mindset to get stuff done. And so I definitely find that helps. So any advice around the fitness side of things or just around trying to stay a bit healthy would be to get up early, try to get a bit of a walk in or do some sort of activity in the morning before you kick off your day. It just refreshes you, just gets you in a nice positive mindset and ready to go for the day. So I absolutely agree. agree with you on that. Yeah. What's next for you then? So you've got your your, your business uh, running at the moment. It sounds like, you know, you're really raring to go and achieve more stuff in the future. But what would you say is immediately next for you, maybe in the first year and then maybe in the next five years? Well, we've got our own development projects. So we're probably going to build close to 60, 70 units, apartments in city centre Manchester. That's the sort of the goals. We've got probably about 25 projects launching sort of London, Manchester, Birmingham. Um, doing a lot more travelling as well. Um, we, we have got close to over 200 partners around the world. So it's, it's going and visiting them, building, I mean, nurturing those relationships, making them stronger. Um, mm. And then over the, the sort of the five years, ultimately the goal was developing. I mean, I, I've tried a fair few things from Network Martin, so obviously all the businesses that I've stated before. And property developing for me is, is the one which I, I love because I've always wanted to be able to work with high net worth individuals and work with people, serious operators. Um, it's not to say there's not operations in any other industries, but... I found that people in the property industry, even though there are a lot of uh, chances, as we call them in Manchester, there's a lot of people that do know what they're talking about and do do make a lot, lot of money. So, yeah, just sticking on that path, developing, mm-hmm. taking sort of one step at a time. Um, and ultimately, the goal for me is by five, ten years is building luxury homes. I think what, the way what I found is in the industry, it's easier to get five million pounds of someone than it is 50 grand, uh, which seems a bit strange, but it's uh, the way the way it's, the cookie crumbles in this industry. So that's what I'm looking to do: stick on the developing and uh, re- really, I mean, I guess build my personal brand um, a bit of speaking as well over the, sort of the next few years. Probably try and go over to more of the American scene because I know quite a number of people over there who, who do very very well for themselves and just traveling and experience stuff. I think that's the key. Fantastic. 
where where can people find you social media websites contact information so instagram and linkedin um instagram's j.notman um uh, that's it and then linkedin again just my name jake notman and then and one invest.co.uk and um, that's where i'm at and again probably see a bit more of me over the next sort of 18 to 24 months because the personal brand is uh going to start kicking off for sure fantastic and are there any final bits of advice or anything uh, any closing remarks that you want to give before we sign off at work everyone else simple as that <laughs> that's all it is fantastic and patience fantastic that's a great set of advice, I think, to finish up on. So thank you so much for your time, Jake. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being on the Grafter show as well. Really appreciate it. So, yeah, anyone looking to find Jake, um, he's already mentioned the Instagram and his other social media account links. I'll be sure to have them in the show notes as well as his website as well. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Jake. Cool.